All right, let's uh, get a little quick hitter now that we saw with good conductors things were uh, out of phase by 45 degrees. Let's see what else we can uh, do with these out of phase uh, questions. So our statement is calculate the time average energy density of an electromagnetic plane wave in a conducting medium. Show that the magnetic contribution always dominates. Okay, conducting, revisit last question. And B, show that the intensity is K over 2 mu omega E naught squared E to the negative 2 kappa Z. All right. What we need to know, plane waves have the form E is equal to uh, E naught E to the negative kappa Z cosine with uh, delta E X hat. B is equal to the same thing, B naught, which was E naught over C. Um, everything the same except we have some... Uh, delta E plus phi, so that's the total uh, phase angle in the y direction. Their ratio, uh, which was found, was k over omega, a lot of things canceling, uh, which is equal to the square root of epsilon mu uh, square root of 1 plus sigma over uh, epsilon omega squared. Okay, and k we saw before in the last couple of questions was equal to this uh, monster. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and dive in. A, the energy density found in the last chapter was U equal 1 half epsilon uh, E squared plus 1 over mu uh, B squared. So we'll go ahead and uh, plug in the E and B fields, square them respectively. We see that uh, each term has a um, E to the negative kappa, uh, negative kappa Z, which when you square them, you have a factor of 2. Hence the negative 2 uh, kappa Z factored out. Um, can't do much more with that uh, cosine since we have phase differences there. Um, and now we're tasked to find the time average. Let's recall over a full cycle, cosine squared equals 1 half. Okay. Um, there's a little other trick for that, but over the um, I'll put that in the notes below, but it's pretty cool. Uh, Again, if you do 0 to 2 pi divided by 2 pi, uh, you see exactly what cosine needs to be. Uh, anyways, uh, thus we see that we have 1 half e to negative 2 kappa z. Um, clearly, the epsilon and e squared term from above stays, and the cosine goes to 1 half. Similarly, the 1 over mu b naught squared term stays, and the cosine there goes to 1 half. Um, so if we plug in the B naught from the purple using the ratio, which was, uh, B naught over E naught equal that square root thing. And we push E naught over, we can substitute that in. And we see here that, uh, when we do that again, I color coordinated it with purple so we can square it. So we get it, uh, E naught squared and that outside square root goes away. Um, we see that after, with that outside square root going away, we get a uh, mu cancellation of mu's, and now we're able to factor out an epsilon e epsilon e naught squared from the bracket. So we're left with one plus square root of one plus sigma uh, over epsilon omega squared. And what we need to recall is that k is equal to omega uh, epsilon mu over two times the square root nonsense plus one. So we're pretty similar in the things here, and all we're trying to do is form match them. So um, with that, if we uh, push everything over uh, so that we can have the bracket above for the intensity of the time average, and we can substitute in the bracket from above with some term of K, solving this for uh, the bracket, we have to shove everything over to the K side, so k divided by omega, uh, and a reciprocal of the square root, so that's where we get 2 over epsilon mu. Square both sides, so you get k squared over omega squared equals, or times 2 over epsilon uh, mu, is equal to the square root of 1 plus sigma over omega epsilon squared plus 1. And then, of course, addition is commutative, so switch the two. And we plug the square stuff with the k's, from the uh, left hand side into the bracket from above and we see here that when we do that we get a lot of cancellations the epsilons cancel a factor of two cancels 
And indeed, the time average intensity is equal to k squared over 2 omega squared mu e naught squared uh, times e to the negative uh, 2 kappa z. Um, so pretty good there. Um, and so now what we need to do is um, show that the ratio of the magnetic contribution is uh, going to dominate over the electric contribution. So U mag over U electric, uh, well, again, since we know that the cosine squared uh, over the average cycle is one half, we see that the one halves cancel, and we're left with uh, one over mu epsilon B naught over E naught squared. So again, put that ratio in there and square it. Uh, once we square the outside radical goes away and we get cancellations of epsilon naught and or epsilon and mu's with the fraction and we see that we have one plus omega over epsilon sigma squared in the square root but we know that since it's a good conductor that sigma is so big that the square root uh that the one plus the uh parentheses squared is much greater than one so we're good there and since it's much greater than one, we know that the ratio, uh, the electric is going to be tiny compared to what the magnet gives if we have some big number. Big divided by small equal big. All right. So now that we have that, uh, we can use uh, S equal 1 over mu E cross B and take their cross product here. Uh, clearly, that's going to leave a lot of familiar stuff. Uh, X and Y give a Z hat. Note that the average of the product of the cosines is equal to one uh, half cosine phi um, once you uh, integrate it out. So S uh, time average is equal to one over two mu E naught B naught E to the negative two kappa Z cosine phi uh, Z hat and the intensity is equal to the scalar of this. And so here we just get rid of K or the B naught with the E naught K omega. And we simplify things and we see that we have one over two mu omega E naught squared K E to the negative two kappa Z cosine phi. Okay. And with that, the blues, we see that we substitute that in for the K and the answer, and we see the intensity is equal to K over 2 mu uh, omega epsilon naught, or not epsilon naught, E naught squared E to the negative 2 kappa Z. And we're good to go. Um...